Hey guys, what's going on? Retro here, and welcome back to not another TF2 commentary. And instead, I will be bringing you guys one of the most requested videos of all time on my channel ever since I first posted an SFM speed art or any SFM related video, which is going to be a SFM tutorial. So, as many of you guys probably know, SFM is probably one of the biggest things that I do compared other to TF2 as SFM is what got me started on YouTube and what started actually my, most of my TF2 career. So this is going to be the SFM tutorial from yours truly. So I hope you guys enjoy this and this is going to be basically a full rundown of how I make a SFM or poster in my way. and and the way I do it every single time. Now, later down the road, I will make more SFM videos with the different plugins that you should have installed, different things that will make SFM easier, but this is just gonna be basically a full rundown so you guys can see what it looks like and I can explain it, and then later down the road, you guys know what to install, and then you can come back to this video as a reference. All right, so one of the most important tips you wanna do when opening up SFM or getting started with it is actually open up SFM. All right, so you want to download SFM from Steam. It is free. There's no charge. Some people have asked if it's a paid program. It's not. It's completely free. And then it does take a little while to load, is since it is a big program in in the terms I mean big, really uh, memory high um, s program. So it's gonna take a long time to load, render and all sorts of other things. It's really graphic it intense it graphic and it's very oh my god. English please like why is this such an issue in my videos? I don't know what it is. But anyway, it's very graphic intensive and it uses a lot of memory. So be prepared for that when you consider doing SFM. Alright, so let's get into SFM and let's wait for the little pop up screen. Alright, here we go. So when you first when you open up SFM you're going to be greeted with the new session screen so all the things you're really going to do is just basically touch what is the name so I think I already tested out I was just testing around with the uh, new or with not with the new but with making a tutorial so let's just name this uh, poster tutorial and let's give it retro edition Edition. And yes, you will be hearing my c very loud, clicky razor. Uh, I think it's a Black Widow. Yeah, it's a Black Widow, so I do apologize for that. And then that's pretty much it. Uh, this directory should already be created, and you should already be there, and I don't really mess around with the frame rate. So let's create. And here we go. So actually, before we get started, let me uh, delete this so I can. Oh. Program's lagging. There we go. All right, so I've this is what SFM should look like when you first load it up. And one of the things I like to do is go into View here. Oh, I mean Windows, and go into Secondary Viewport. And it's going to bring up this second window. And what you're going to want to do is click on Secondary Viewport and drag it to this bottom box in the this bottom box. And then just want to. I'd just like to bring this up just a little bit. So you can get a secondary viewport, and I will show you why that comes in handy in a few moments. So the first thing you want to do in making an SFM poster or, t or animation or anything SFM related is load a map. So you want to right click into this big black area, which is your main screen, and then it will pull up this selector, and you can select uh, any TF2 map or any custom map that you have installed from a website you've downloaded or from the workshop. So let's go with I'm going to go with Double Cross, which is one of my favorite maps to uh, work with SFM because it's a dark map, but it has a lot of nice spots where you can do some really nice lighting. So now it's going to take a while to load the map. Like I said, the program isn't like the fastest thing ever, so I will jump cut to when the map loads. <laughs> All right, guys, looks like SFM has loaded. So one of the very first things that I do, once you load into your map, you want to go to this gray box in this area, right click, press create animation set for new camera. All right, and there we go. And now we've got our camera. And then to use our camera, we want to go to this arrow and have it drop down, hold down, change cameras or change scene camera, and then go to camera one. And now you're in your camera one. 
and to move around you're gonna get this error that says invalid manipulation so what you need to do is you need to go into the motion editor this allows you to edit and be able to move around in SFM so what you want to do is have your camera selected you want to go to the move tool which is this uh, which can be accessed by W and then all you need to do is just click into the window here and you can move around you use your mouse and what you do is you hold down left click and you can look around and to move around you use WASD like you would in any normal game that you probably play such as Counter-Strike or TF2 and then you can just move around by holding down left click and just using your different WASD keys and if you want to move a little bit faster let's say I want to go to the other side of the map and I don't want to travel at two miles an hour you can hold down shift to go a little bit faster or a lot faster actually to get to the location you want to do so this is probably one of my most favorite spots to create a poster with which is right here located on the bridge of double cross and the reason I chose this is because it has a nice background here there's got a enough room in the skybox here for a custom skybox which I'll show you guys how to do later and it's not like one of those flat backgrounds the number one thing you want to look in the background as many of you guys probably won't think it was that important like some people I see do SFM posters which is completely fine but they do it with a flat background like like they put a poster like right in front of here and that's not really interesting so you want to go with something that has a lot of that gives the picture a lot of depth so and now I will show you guys how this secondary viewport comes into play so what you want to do is you want to hold down again on this drop down arrow and copy to work camera so and then what you can do in this big camera or big window is you can move around freely while the camera one still stays here and you can see what's happening but you can move around and edit things without having to switch back and forth from cameras so it's really it's a really nice feature and it makes everything a lot more simpler and this area right here is what camera one sees so now the first thing we want to do after we get our camera set up and we find a good spot is load in our model so you want to right click into this gray box in the left corner again and then oh I didn't show what I should click well sorry about that I'm just so used to it it's just like it's like second hand I just always go to it without looking so anyway you want to right click again into this box and create animation set for new model and then it brings up the model selector which will bring up every single model that you have downloaded from a custom site or the workshop or is already pre-existing in SFM and SFM has all the files from Half-Life 2 and TF2 and it sadly does not have CSGO but you can manually put that in from I do believe from the workshop there is a huge download where you can get all the stuff in so what we're gonna wanna do is I'm gonna be creating my iconic spy set which is gonna be my Hong Kong cone and my rogue and everything so what you're gonna wanna do is type into this filter box spy and then we're gonna scroll down and look for tf underscore movie player slash hwm slash spy dot mdl and then you can see the little spy model pop up here and then we're going to press open and there it is so as camera one we get a nice shot of his crotch all right and uh now you're going to be asking how do you move this you want to select the spy and you want to be able and you can want to be on your move tool which is w and then uh, let's let's get him in a nice spot here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move him over here and let's get him right here. And let's make sure he's touching the ground. So there we go. There we go. All right. So this is as pr this is pretty straightforward with the move tool. The big blue box in the middle. You can move him anywhere with, and then this will keep him on the X, Y, and Z axis. So there we go. All right. We have our spy model here and there we go we can see in our camera one what it's starting to look like so to add a cosmetic to the spy or anything you want to add to him you have to right click on the model and go to add team fortress item and the first item we're going to be adding is hong kong cone so we're going to click onto the hong kong cone and make sure you have it selected and then press ok and there we go and now he has the hong kong cone on him and the next item we want to add is we want to do the same thing right click add team fortress item 
and we want to go to the no mercy select no mercy place it in and for the final item we're going to be adding the rogues robe so we want to look up rogue then we find rogues rope select it and there we go all right he's got all his mists and they're already all zeroed in and locked to the character so next we want to do, what we want to do is we want to right click we're going to add the weapon here we're going to be adding the ambassador which is the normal ambassador and you're like whoa what the fuck is that what happened now don't worry this is in a stock pose so the a revolver is not supposed to be meant to hold and is not s supposed to be able to be held in this position so it's just going to be a little bit funky but that will be fixed in a moment once we add a sequence or pose so to add a sequence or pose or animation to the model we want to right click on the spy go to import and go to sequence so these are all the already pre-generated animations or sequences as we as SFM calls them that is in SFM like here is jump float loser here is air walk melee so this is if you're in the air here is crouch with the PDA aka the uh, disguise kit so what we're gonna be looking for here is let's get him in a nice running shot so we're gonna look for run underscore I do believe it is let's see where is it it is secondary so there we go all right we can see him holding the gun there that's where the ambassador will fit and we want this guy to be running so we're gonna go to move underscore X which is the x-axis and we're gonna drag this all the way to the right here it's gonna get him in a good running pose and we're gonna want him to face the camera a little bit so oops that is not the right way um, so we're gonna be moving this to the left a little bit like so and we don't really need to move move or touch body underscore pitch or yaw unless you're doing an action scene or anything relating the character looking up or down and we're not really going to be doing that so that's all we're going to be really wanting to do so here is the spy in his running animation now it is static right now since we are not moving in the frame or we're not actually playing through the animation but if we were it would look like this like he was running and you can see down here and you can also see in camera one and so we are creating a poster so that we're not really going to have that happen. So what we're going to want to do now is add the unusual effect. So we're going to go to create animation set for new particle system. And we're going to want to browse. And what, what it normally comes up with, I do believe it does not immediately start on particles. So if it doesn't start on particles, you want to go to program files. You want to go to your program files. You want to go to Steam. Oh, it's lagging. Is it there? Alright, Steam Apps. Common. And then we want to go to Source Filmmakers right here. Game. TF. And Particles. And then it will bring up all the particles in TF2 from explosions to blood trails to blood impacts to flamethrowers all the way to unusual effects. So, I do have a custom unusual effect file here. And normally the unusual effects would be hosted in item underscore FX, which would give you all the unusual effects, but they'd be in odd names like super rare confetti purple. And so instead I have a custom file here that just reads out the names normally that so for example, it just says electrostatic instead of like robo underscore electric or something weird. So we're going to look up for green black hole, which I do believe is just right well, there it is green black hole and you can just type in the name as well and so normally what I like to do which you don't really have to do as long as it is a negative is go to negative 15 as the start time and the emission duration which is 99 and the particle system lifetime is 99 so the unusual there we now have an unusual effect in here but it's not there where is it what you have to do is there's two methods of making the effect visible since it starts at negative 15 in the timeline we haven't actually got there yet so we can either do this two ways one we can move the we can move this back behind the zero mark of the timeline and then back into it and that'll make it visible or you can copy the effect by going to right clicking on it copy animation set and then paste animation set and it will make it visible and you can do it either 
either way and to make the effect visible. So now we want to lock this on and put this onto the spy's head so we don't have it floating out here in the front of the screen. So we want to hit this plus button and have these two drop downs and then do the same thing for the spy and open up body. And then we're going to go to bip head and we're going to Y S F M. What what's happening here? Hold up. I will be right back in a moment. I think I pressed a button. I should not have. All right, guys, we're back. I don't know what happened there. Um, I forget. There's something. I don't know what happens there, but I really actually don't know what happens there because that's the way I've always been doing it. And I don't know why I couldn't drag bip head onto a transform. But basically, after we expand both of these tabs from spy and body and green and black hole to all, we want to drag bip underscore head to transform. And it will lock it, basically connecting it to the head region of the spy. Then you want to select the green black hole effect and then go up to here in this box with default 0, half, and 1. And we want to click and hold down 0 and move your mouse all the way to the right. And god damn it, who's messaging me? Oh wait, whoops, uh, I mean we go to... We first have to be in the motion editor and then we can go to 0. And you can see the bar goes all the way. So we want to drag it all the way so then now it is on the spy. And we can do the exact same thing, go behind the timeline, and then there we go. Now it is locked onto the spy model in his head area. So, um, as we can see in camera one, we can see the spy running. Actually, um, I'm going to change the sequence here because I do not like the way he's running. So I'm just going to redo our sequence here and go to run and then secondary, go to X. And actually, oh yes, I, I went the wrong way. That's really awkward. All right, so let's, there we go. All right, now we can get him in a nice running stance. The next thing that I like to do is go to the camera, as we can see in our work camera here, then press our E T O E tool. That wasn't even English, holy crap. I think I'm gonna start just getting a counter where I fail with SFM. I'm getting still messaged for some reason, I don't know why. I think I forgot to put myself in offline mode. But I think I should put a counter in the top left of my video saying, how many times does Retro say a word that's not even English? So, like I was saying before, I'd like to go to our rotation tool, which is accessible using the hotkey E. And then we wanna to go to this red circle in the middle and we wanna turn it a little bit this way as we can see in camera one. Then we wanna go back, click here and go back to camera one. And then we can go to move the camera a little bit better to get focused on the spy. And then I'm going to move the spy just a bit more. I'm going to rotate him as well this way. And there we go. All right, so now we've got the spy in our position here. All right, there we go. All right, there's our spy in our position. And next, what we want to do is we want to add lights, as since this picture isn't really looking that bright, am I right? <laughs> okay, that was not really good fun. Anyway, um, what I normally like to do is I either add four to five lights, depending on the situation here. I always add four no matter what, and sometimes five for a top. So there we go, we can see the, the light doesn't actually have a model, it is invisible, but it does produce light, so it won't interfere with any models, or you won't see it. So like. What I do is I pull up the rotation tool, go to this blue circle in the middle, and you want to just really just focus it on his body. And then we go to intensity here and bring it down. We do not want it to be too bright, so let's let's go let's go with right there. All right, that looks great. Then we go for light two, and what we want to do is we want to go to our move at tool with the W. We want to drag it all the way over here to the side of the spy. Then we're going to rotate it with E to his face, or not exactly face, but his right side it depend on left side over here. So then we want to rotate it with this middle blue circle, and then we want to move it back down with the green circle. Now, as you can see, it's probably not covering his entire body, we, and we can fix that by going to horizontal FOV and bringing it up just a bit. And we don't make it too too big because we don't want the sun to be staring at him 
and now we just bring down the intensity just a little bit to give them a nice little glare on that side and then now we'll do the exact same for light 3 except we will be moving it to the right side so what I normally like to do is get a full coverage here of lights here from each angle including the top sometimes and then let's just move it over here whoa that's moving a li little bit too fast looks like raise my mouse sensitivity just a little bit too high so we're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna raise the rise holy retro okay we're gonna make the FO horizontal FOV a bit higher then we're gonna give them a nice glow on this side as well and then finally for the fourth one we're gonna be dragging it all the way behind the spy put it let's put it right behind them right here I'm going to rotate around, put it on the back. Now this one I normally like to, uh, whoops, circle, circle please. Um, I normally like to put it all the way up on a uh, horizontal, I like to put it up like, like really high. So it gets that nice little glow behind them and that's what makes it look really nice. So then we're going to bring the glow up just a little bit. We don't want to make him look like he's freaking Jesus and holy light around him. I just want to give him a nice little touch behind them there we go then we're gonna go to light 5 and this is optional sometimes I like to add a little color to this light and put it on top of them to add effect for the tut add a add touch to the effect and jeez I'm really gonna put a counter up there one day and say let's see how good retro is at English haha <laughs> um, whoa wait I am going the complete wrong way am I alright so I'm gonna Alright, we're going to bring this down to him. You can also just click into the circle to bring it down. Alright, so there it is. It's on top of him. And it brings the light down on him. And we're going to bring down the intensity just a little bit. And you know what? That light's actually really not doing a difference. See, you can barely see it. So we're just going to delete that light. We don't really need it. Alright, and there we go. There's our character. And I'm actually going to move this back just a little bit. There we go. That looks beautiful. Right, there we go that is our spy and he's very well lit actually probably a little bit too well lit where is this light coming from it's light four so so we're gonna bring it down just a bit all right there we go and then we are going to be adding a little bit to the background something i normally like to do is i like to spice up the poster or sfm so for example if i was given a request for this exact spy loadout I mean sure it looks great right now I mean it's probably gonna look even better in the final render process but look at that background I mean sure we picked out a nice background but that doesn't look cool so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a medic and a heavy to the background to spice it up so we're gonna go with we're gonna look up medic and we're gonna find the medic model and then we're gonna look up the heavy model as well and remember you guys use the model the tf underscore movie player slash hwm slash heavy dot mdl all right let's oh i didn't select the heavy whoops daisy i selected the wrong model shame on me all right let's go to heavy there we go all right there's the heavy and they're inside each other not actually don't take that as a sexual joke please thank you um, and then we are going to make these characters blue since we want this to be the enemy team. So what we need to do is right click on the model, go to skins, and then here are all the different skins. This is red, bl red, blue, ubered, red and blue, same, same thing with four, four and five. So we're going to go with one since we would like them to be on the opposing team. And now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add, we're going to give the heavy a minigun. And we're going to give the medic a medigun. Medigun. There we go. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to put them in a pose. We're going to import sequence like before. Go to run and secondary. And then we're going to go with X all the way so he looks like he's running. Same thing with heavy. We're going to import sequence. And run primary. And then we're going to do the same thing with X. So, oh, oh, whoops, it looks like they moved positions, I think. All right, there's X. All right. Now, something that I actually messed up with in my early times of SFM, which you can't really see it right now, but here, let me uh, hide the uh, minigun. 
this medigun's red. So we got to do the same thing we did with the changing the color of the heavy and medic. We're going to right click on the medigun, go to skin, and set one. There we go. And same thing, we're going to now make the heavy visible. And like you saw there, you can make things visible or invisible by clicking the little eye icon next to the model light or animation. So we're going to hold down control, click the heavy and the medic, and we're just going to move them back behind the behind the spy here. And we're going to put them like this, and we're going to rotate them since we'd like to have them run this way and let's let's get the uh, the heavy out of the uh, medic space probably doesn't really like that so we'll, we'll put them right here and uh, let's let's put uh, let's put them on the ground you know I, I mean I, I don't think they're uh, floating so let's, let's have them touch the ground here all right there we go and is the heavy touching the ground yes he is all right so let's let's not make him look too close uh, let's back him up just a wee bit Yes, I did use the word we. All right, but then we have them in the background here. They still look like they're running at the spy. I'd rather have them run just the other way, just as a side thing in the background. And now this isn't realistic. Where's where's the medic's med gun? So let's add in that particle, create a new animation set for particle system. Go to browse. We go to medigun beam. There you go. And then we want to go to, uh, we'll see. Medigun, where is it? Medigun, Medigun, there we go. Medigun underscore beam blue. Same thing we want to do, negative 15. Your classic spam of the nines. And there we go. Now we're going to do copy and paste to make the animation visible. And there is the Medic's Uber, Uber, uh, Magical Medigun, or Medigun beam, excuse me. Now, this is going to take a little bit of posing. We're going to do the drop down again, and there's going to be control point 0 and zero and 1. So we're going to want to move control point 1 not into his ass. Um, or, I mean, not that was even close. Jeez. Um, we're going to be moving it. We're going to attempt to move it into his chest so that looks like it's centered in his chest. There it is. And then we're going to move control point 1 forward just a bit. So now the medigun is healing the. Whoa, that looks a little bit big. A little, just just a little bit. All right, let's let's move this so we can. Uh, sometimes you do just have to manually pose things, and there's nothing really much you can do about it. Which SFM does require patience, which surprisingly is not one of my strong suits. But uh, oh well. Guess maybe maybe I'll, I'll learn patience from this. All right, so there's the medigun, and let's uh, let's add some facial expressions to these two background characters. Since for all we know, the medic is staring at that ass, and we'd we'd prefer not for that to happen. So we click onto the medic. We go to lenses. There's these different tabs here. You can either click one individually or these little small arrows. And we want to go to whoa. We actually pass it up. Wait, did we? No, we, we want to keep going until we hit emotions, and this will bring up the different animations here. And let's let's uh, let's do he's uh, let's let's say he's mad. Wait, uh, did I not select the? Well, this is awkward. Um, hello, I don't know what's happening with SFM. Oh, there's two emotion tabs. Uh, it's the second one. There we go. Yeah, it's the second one. Uh, let's go. Yeah, he's, he's going to be mad. There you go. It's the second tab. Don't confuse get confused with this one. It's the second emotion tab. That's my bad, guys. And then, as you can see, the eyes are still... For all we know, this guy's dead. So uh, we want to go to this other box in the bottom. And we want to go to items up. And let's move them up. So we're just going to hold down left click again. There we go, and then give the heavy, uh, he's, he's also looking at his, his minigun, he's looking at Sasha, and we're going to do the same thing with the heavy, we're going to go to the second emotion tab, he's going to be mad as well, and whoa, that looks a bit scary, let's actually, let's, let's go like this, there we go, and let's move his eyes up, and, and there we go, now he's looking, now we've got some nice facial expressions in the background, and before we render this out, we're pretty much almost done with the SFM, and these are all the models and lights that normally go into a 
simple SFM that I normally do. Let's get a, there we go, nice, nice pose there. And then we'll find, before we render, we want to right click into this big window here, or any window actually, go to render settings, disable motion blur or else the entire thing is going to look like a really abstract painting and you probably don't want that to happen, unless you're really artsy like that, go for it. But normally I'd recommend never have motion blur on, ever unless you're doing an animation or some sort, which I have not done yet. So the f next thing you want to do is depth of field is you want to go to 1024 or 1024 override and do not click this. That is my bad. I missed that. 1024 and press OK. And then the final things we want to do is select camera. And then this is focal distance. This is depending on how far the camera will see until it starts to blur the background. So normally what you want to do is get this in the middle of the body slash face. And then we want to bring up the aperture a little bit. You don't want to go too crazy since, like I said before, you don't want an abstract painting. I mean, if you really want an abstract one, go for it. I mean, there's no reason to. And then these things, you, I like to just put this, just move it just a little bit. You don't really need to touch this, to be honest. And that's it. Now all we have to do is render out the poster. So we want to go to File, Export, Poster, Save. And depending on if you're if you're making this as a thumbnail, you want to save it as a JPEG since the is since the items not item but the uh, pictures in file size will be a lot smaller. And then if you're making this like a background or a wallpaper, you want to go for PNG. So let's make this look really good. So we're gonna make it a PNG. I'm going to save it to our downloads here, and like I said before, it does lag. And yes, I'm a terrible person. I save it to my downloads. Everything's there. <laughs> Hate on me. Um, but we're going to name this as ret Retro Tutorial. Save. And then we don't really need to touch anything else here. And export poster. And now we'll go into the render process, and I will see you guys once it finishes rendering. All right, guys, it looks like it has finished rendering. So we're going to go into our file browser depending or oh, actually this is SFM is only for Windows only so I apologize for you Apple users I, th I yeah but anyway you want to go into your downloads um, I have two downloads because uh, I have multiple uh, places where I store things so it is gonna be my most recent things we're gonna right click this we're gonna open with I do open with, with Photoshop there is multiple ways you can use this or edit this which hello I don't, I don't know what that was Anyway, we're in SFM, or Jesus, we're in, we're in Photoshop. Actually, you know what? I am going to, <laughs> music is messaging me for an SFM. Uh, I'm going to take this and be right back. All right, guys, we're back, and uh, I'm actually going to re-render this since I think it is a little bit, Actually, you know what? I, I think it looks fine. I, I was going to re-render it since, I, I don't know, there's some things I could touch up, but that's completely fine. Either way, that I think this looks really nice. And what I like to do is, well, in Photoshop, if you do have Photoshop, there's a, a add-on, not really an add-on, but a plugin that I like to use that is uh, hidden. I need to Photoshop, please. All right, I need to drag this down so I can pull up the window since I'm recording, and the thing kind of blocks over it. So we want to go to file and then go to magic bullet and looks which is what I use to edit my photos. So what I do is there's a lot of pre-made sort of filters. This is not Instagram people. If I swear to god if you make an Instagram reference, I I will find you. But basically you want to go to subtle. What I use is subtle soft film which is my favorite look here. It like gives it a nice glow, and now you're like, whoa, that is way too bright. And that's why you make two layers in Photoshop, and you bring it down to maybe like 45. You just mess around with it. Just a bit. There we go, that looks, that, that looks nice there. There we go. And then the final thing that I do, I always do this in pretty much all of my posters, is go to File, I mean not File, f Edit, Fill, fill it with white, make a whole new layer, just completely white, and now you'll see why. I'm not crazy, don't worry. Go to lens correction, you want to go to custom, then you want to bring up the vignette just a little bit, and that looks fine. And then you want to go to the, you want to drop down tab, and then you want to go to multiply, and then it gives a nice little dark background, so it gives it a nice little clean look. And then all we got to do is save it, 
as the PNG it is, which is Retro Tutorial. And there we go. That is a completed SFM Retro Edition, which is how I make my SFM posters. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I will be definitely making a lot more of SFM videos down the road since I would like to focus my channel mostly towards SFM since that I did not mean to open it up in Photoshop again. God damn it. Which, I mean, I meant to open it up in uh, Photo Windows Viewer. Wow, it looks really bad in that. All right, we'll just look at it uh, in Photoshop like this. But I'll definitely be making more SFM videos since I'd like to focus my channel more on SFM and then I do TFT trading, which will still be a huge aspect. There will be actually a really big TFT trading video tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. But I hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know what you guys think. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments section below. And look forward to many more SFM, SFM videos. And this is Retro, signing off.